<clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to um, make a read. And I'm going to do uh, the read for the easiest channer, which is the Brad uh, Angus D channer. And, you know, I've made, well, I've documented 23. I've probably made 100 of these reads. This is one of the better ones, so I'm going to try and uh, duplicate this. And the first thing I'm going to do is um, roll a staple. Now, I've got um, copper and brass for doing this. i got a mess here, too. <laughs> Um, if I did it in copper, uh, I think the end result might sound the same as the brass. Uh, but with this I've got to anneal it, and it's thicker walls. And I seem to get a little better results with um, a bigger ID um, staple. But that might be just chance or luck. So anyhow, with the brass it's thin enough that I don't need to uh, anneal it. Now this brass is uh, I forget what gauge it is but it's um, about 0.36 millimeters and maybe I can probably use this thing and just trim it and I've got a little scribe somewhere. It's my scribe. And um, I do it 12.4 by 13.4 by 52.5. So hmm. Well, you know what? I don't really think length matters all that much in these things because you adjust it within the channel anyhow. So since that's already cut there, that's about 51 millimeters, we'll go with that. Um, that looks like it's going to be the thinner side and we want it to be in thickness 12.4. So 11. I'm going to do roughly about right there. Go a little bit over. Because uh, you can always file it down, but you can't add more. And 13.4 down here. 13.5-ish. These are the shears that I use, these big honking things. Actually, I've never cut this thin of a cut before, so this will be interesting. But you can be pretty, pretty accurate with it. I think. And the disclaimer or caveat in all this is um, a real experienced read maker, I think, would have made um, thousands of reads, and I haven't. I've made, I don't know, maybe one or two hundred reads. I'm getting to the point where most of them work to some degree or another. There. The brass. So, uh, the next thing that I do, and I'd love to hear if other people have an easier way of doing this, put a file on here like this, and I want, what did I say, 12.4 by 13.4.
12.8, so I'm roughly uh, 0.5 too large there. And it's supposed to be 13.4, and I'm 13.46. So that one got cut pretty close. So I'm gonna cut mostly, or file mostly on this side. And one of the things is sometimes it's hard to tell. So I'm gonna say this is the wide end. And this is the, the thinner end. And when I file them, I put most of the weight on the thin end because I was 0.5 off there and nearly right on on the other side. In fact, what I could do is um, keep this side on the non-abrasive side of the file. Actually, a little bit won't hurt. And 12.4. Okay, so I'm a little over 0.0. .0. One seven over. I already took off more of this than I wanted to, so I'm not going to file at all on that end anymore. You know, I spent a lot of time making sure that this is really accurate. Mm, getting there. Well, I'm there. Twelve point three seven. And 13 point. And usually what I do is while I'm making this stuff, I will mark up. Okay, so the length of this one, I keep a record of it is what I meant. To, I've got to finish these sentences. Um, so that's around 50.5. Fifty point five, and the min diameter is twelve point three four. And when I'm all done, I'll um, assuming this is a good one, I'll call it um, D, whatever the number is going to be, probably probably twenty four, and then I'll put in the new di new dimensions. 13.35. So that's pretty close. Next, what we do is we grab the Brad Angus mandrel. All right, we're gonna have to make another one of these. Uh, but this is what I pound um, the mandel, mandrel with the brass through. And I made this thing to hold on to the mandrel. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Lots of room for fixing things later. You see, the problem is if I, if I put it up here, I might be a little bit closer to where it's gonna end up with, but um, but uh, he's flattened both sides. Um, so when I'm done with this, I'll go over to the, um, the vise for the final um, crimping. Mm, excuse me. So it gave a little bit of an uneven start, actually a lot of an uneven start, but again, I've found that that doesn't really matter. Just, just so it has the beginning of starting. So I can then come over here. I'm not sure if I've seen this on any videos or anything, but this is what Brad does. And I think it works out just great. I think other people use a hammer. Um, hammering it will change the properties of it and again I'm not sure if that really matters that much it'll um, harden it I think so
ngayon ang batong lupa ay ang malamig. Hindi na ito malamig. Hindi kaysa kung sino. But you do get a uh, nice tight seam. All right, that's maybe that's good enough. Clearing a little space here. This is the hardest part: putting stuff away in between steps. part I don't like. I don't like cleaning up. <laughs> but now I'm on camera so I have to do it. All right. Now for my two dollar file. What I'll try and do is um, close this this first and then kind of work my way back and if um, uh, and then what I can do is once that's closed on the round here, because you can see it starts to it starts to flatten that on the edges here, then I can um, I can move it um, further up the mandrel and uh, close this a little bit better. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a, a lot of weight here and over here. See how that's starting to close up real nicely. Actually, I pulled that back a little bit because I want to. Um, I don't know if you can see this in the camera that well, but I'm trying to get a nice tight um, contact all the way around. pretty tight. Um, the next thing we're going to do is create the eye. There we go. I don't need this anymore. So what you like to do is put the seam uh, right in the middle here and then place the seam up against one of these plier edges. I think I usually do the top. And then squeeze. Yeah, moved a little bit, but that's not a big deal. And then you squeeze along the end to create that uh, slope. And one of the things I've been doing recently, because I don't know how well I'm getting that um, the, the slope that um, he puts in this mandrel. Um, but I also hammer it just a little bit. Let's open up a little bit there. I'm going to squeeze that shut. I've seen things where they suggest doing this. Just closing it. Literally that it works. And then do the other side. And next. I need this still. I really need to look up what the name of this um, plier is. So this came in the in the kit that I got from um, Tim Britton. I'll open up just a little bit, so I like to keep that closed. And what we want to do is create kind of a point here and there to make it look 
kind of like in the shape of an eye. So you put pressure on it and kind of pull it across. And do the same over here. Do a little bit on one side and then on the other. good. Now the um, the eye height is about 1.4 um, millimeters and that is kind of hard to measure. You know I've tried doing this whatever these things are called. It's like an ID I guess. It says 1.4 Five two, so we're a little bit larger than that. It's hard to find the exact center, and sometimes those blades can get um, caught in in that uh, that little space there. So the other thing that I do is um, I'll mark on on this thing or on a file that I use. I'll put 1.4 here. And I'll lack that off. And And then I stick this in here and see how close I am to 1.4. Yeah, you see I was measuring 1.5 before and so this can be opened up a little bit. So I actually use this to help open it up. I suppose you could do the other side. Um, right about like that. Um, the other tool I use a lot is part of my file set. There's one in here that is flat on one side. This is it right here. So I don't know if you can see that that well. It's flat here and rounded here. And so as I'm moving this to create space, I can actually kind of bend the brass a little bit to help. Like right now, the, um, that seems to have a fairly nice curve on it, but this side doesn't. So I kind of I also do this to to file out all the burrs. Actually, that's looking pretty good. I've got to clean this up. Now this itself is going to leave a, a a burr. And another thing from the Tim Britton kit. the edges off. And it's still a little bit flat on the top. Careful that I don't make it too large. 
So this is the Kevin's and Reiterations and how it plays in the um, I to the I. I could tell you what we gotta do this, but I still wanna do that. At least my last time I did this, I had one five four millimeters and this goes to a bread, excuse me. And um let me close see if I close this gap a little bit. I have to say it's not too bad. Okay. Now the other thing I do This is that old hand drill that I talked about in my my tools area. And actually what I do is I put this in here so that the gearing actually falls down on the vise so that when I tighten this here, it's kind of locked. Um, that holds that pr in pretty good shape. And where did my file go? Oh, it was hidden. Okay, so now what I do is I um, create a nice flat bed for that reed to sit on. I'm not sure why that's important, but I've um, seen several other pipers do this. I also round the edges just a little bit. Um, the other thing I do is I, um, I put some rough edges in here that will help hold the reed and the winding in place. Along the, um, the staple. I've had leaks between once one half of the slip in the other. Now she is. Nice and round there. Pretty nicely oval. I might have liked to have a little bit more of a slope here. And I guess that could affect the way that the reed laying on there is going to be compared to this one down here. Makes me want to see if I can make that better. I think by, by leveraging off of the bottom thing here and kind of pulling down So, and then I'll go ahead and make the read.